So we reflect on our life. How do we improve ourselves? How do we become better fathers, better mothers? How do we become more responsible, more responsible being in our societies and our families? This opportunity, we can get it in the month of Ramadan. Because in the month of Ramadan, it's a season when we recite dua. Outside Ramadan, we don't recite dua. We don't spend the nights reciting du'as. Outside Ramadan, we don't pick up the Qur'an to read. Sometimes a day, two days, a week, two months, five months passes by where we don't get the opportunity to even open this book and look at this book. But in Ramadan, we do. We do have this opportunity of reflecting on the Qur'an, reflecting on the du'a, the supplication, standing in the middle of the night and doing a couple of rak'ah, units of prayers. These are opportunities for us to reflect. When you go to the masjid for iftar, for prayers, and to listen to a lecture. The lecture may provide you with a chance, an opportunity to reflect on your life. Where do you go? What direction? If you are 50 years old, what have you achieved in these 50 years? If you are 30 years old, 20 years old, what do you want to do in your life? Where life is taking you? These are important questions. We have to ask them. But when we are busy with daily life activities, with our families, with our jobs, with our engagements, your mind is busy how to pay your bills, you don't get the chance to reflect. The month of Ramadan is an opportunity to reflect. And throughout the year, we can change the shape of our bodies. They show you sometimes television ads. Most of them are, according to the president, fake, you know, fake news. Someone who lost 50 pounds, they don't look alike. You don't think that this is the same person. When someone loses 50 pounds, they, he or she would become a different person. So physically, we can change our shape. Allah says, this is good, but I want you to ch change the shape of your nafs and your soul. This is spiritual transformation, spiritual change. When we change the shape of ourself, how do we change it? How do you change your soul when you stay strong? If your soul is weak, if we give in, give in always, give concessions to maddiyat, whatever my soul tells me to purchase, to buy, to go, to eat, I do, I listen. That soul is weak, does not have power of resistance. The month of Ramadan provides me with a little bit of power of resistance to these desires, to control these desires. Then your soul becomes strong. You become able to direct and navigate your life yourself. And that comes only when you connect with the power of change, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. With the power of inspiration, with the power of energy, which is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the month of Ramadan. So it is an important period of reflection for us. And the natija, the result of fasting, my friends, we have to see it. If we don't see it in these areas that I'm going to mention now, we are losers. We wasted our time and we gained nothing but hunger and thirst. Where should we see it after these three days? We should see it first and foremost in our akhlaq, in our manners, in our relationships has to be reflected in my relationship with my family. My relationship has to improve with my family, with my community, with my friends, with those who live around me. They have to feel it. They have to say, this person is different. I can see not only he lost some weight because of fasting, but he improved. He is more patient. He is more tolerant. He is more forbearing. He's more accepting, he's more forgiving, he's more generous, he's more giving. 
It has to be shown in these areas. In our akhlaq, in our ilaqat, relationships, with people around us, they have to see the positive result of fasting. If they don't see it, if they don't notice it, and if we ourselves do not notice it, then we wasted another Ramadan. Another Ramadan that is wasted with many other Ramadans in the past. According to the Prophet, you gain nothing. How often times, how many people who fast, but they gain nothing but thirst and hunger. No spiritual reward. No spiritual inspiration. No change in their life. They gain nothing. That is the ritualistic fasting which is happening in many Muslim and Arab countries today. This is why the Arabs and the Muslims, all the Muslims, they don't pay attention to Siyam. For them, the season of Ramadan, I received in the mail yesterday, funny letter in the mail, probably because of my Arabic name. The cable channel, they are advertising for Arab TV channels that they have new movies for Ramadan, new music, wallahi, new movies, musalsalat, so come and subscribe. Because they know, they know Arabs and Muslims, they enjoy movies in the Ramadan. They stay up late not to read the Quran or reflect or to pray, no, but to watch new movies. Movies that destroy their life and instigate divorce and division and conflict in the family. That is the wrong Ramadan. That is the wrong practice. We are good Muslim community in America. Stay away from these things. The best enjoyment when you reflect on the Quran. If we just read the Quran, I'll be honest with you, very honest. If you just read it without understanding it, you are not going to enjoy it. Not only are you not going to enjoy it, it is going to be boring. This book is going to be boring if you don't understand. But once you start understanding it, an interactive reading, a reading with reflection, tadabbur, deep tadabbur, what does he want to tell me here? Read one page, not necessarily five pages or 50 pages. One page with tadabbur is better than 500 pages without tadabbur. One page, one ayah. Sometimes I enjoy one ayah. I spend two hours on one ayah, just one ayah in the book, because there are treasures in this book. Treasures in this book. I make new discoveries. Each time I read the Quran, there is a new something that surfaces that I did not realize last time. This is a treasure. That book is going to change us. And when we act upon this book, we understand the meaning, and then we try to practice it in our daily life. That is the enjoyment, which we are missing. Allah says, this month, شَهْرُ رَمَضَانَ الَّذِي أُنزِلَ فِي الْقُرْآنِ It is the birthday of the Qur'an during this month. We sent the Qur'an down during this month, so you reflect on this book. So, and let me say uh, a word or two about the meaning of Ramadan. Ramadan, some scholars say, مِنْ أَسْمَاءِ اللَّهِ تَعَالَى One of the names of God. What does it mean? They have, they say there are two meanings. One meaning is Arbath, comes from Arbath. Arbath means, or your milk, to squeeze something between two rocks and then pound it. When you squeeze something between two rocks and you start pounding it, this is your milk. A person who is fasting by analogy by analogy, pounds his or her own habits and desires and nature between two rocks, hunger and thirst. Between hunger and thirst. This is one. The second meaning, Ramadan min Ramadha. Ramadha is to scorch and burn. So someone who's fasting is not burning calories, but he's burning his sins and his evil to me, and his sayyat is being swept away and washed away and burned by his fasting. 
when he curbs his desire. Self-cleansing is important, my friends. Self-cleansing and self-control is important for every journey in this life. Whatever you need to do, in whatever capacity you are, whether you are a son or daughter, whether you are 12 years old or 90 years old, you need to exercise self-control. Take advantage of this month. If you don't have time to go to the masjid outside Ramadan and Ramadan, you have to make an extra effort to go to the masjid and take your family and take your children and try to worship together, read the dua together, spend the nights in remembrance of Allah and reflection on the Quran and also sharing your goodness during the month of Ramadan. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. وَالْعَصْرِ إِنَّ الْإِنسَانَ لَفِي خُسْرٍ إِلَّا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَعَمِلُوا الصَّالِحَاتِ وَتَوَاصُوا بِالْحَقِّ وَتَوَاصُوا بِالصَّبْرِ وَصَلَّى اللَّهُ وَسَلَّمَ عَلَى سَيِّدِنَا مُحَمَّدٍ وَأَهْلِ بَيْتِهِ الطَّيِّبِينَ الطَّاهِر